much know the answer to this. When this system starts, you want it to start from the scale, right? Okay. Yeah, that came Oh, that came to tell you? Yeah, that's a big problem. Yeah, so. I don't know who I went online. What I'm going to do is just give this off to my salesman and let him figure out what's. I mean, it's program changes and wiring needs to be changed, but. Yeah, the side with the flash out. Yeah, that's, that one I already know, that one. Yeah. Because that's going to drive the PLC nuts. Okay, what we have here, okay, is we have our pre line, post line, and our carbon, okay? The reason the carbon doesn't have a label on it, that one was pretty straightforward, okay? There was some confusion yesterday about who, what, when, why. Okay. Um, basically, all these panels are almost identical. Okay. There is some slight differences, even compared to your Chem One. Okay. If you look up here, the DC drive is exactly the same as you have over Chem One. Okay. Operational wise, you're going to do the same thing. If you remember. All the switches have to be in the auto position, including this switch, for the system to eventually get a start from the skater. Okay. But what you do have here, we'll start off with the carbon one over here, is you do have the silo levels, okay, which right now are run by indicators, which maybe in the near future, like you said, you may get some level control. Okay, but right now they are done by that. The other thing that's a big difference is on the Chem 1, there is no pressure switches. On everything here, there is pressure switches. So if you do lose water flow, the system will shut down. Okay, so if a pipe bursts or if the water gets shut off or something like that, you're going to get a low water pressure here. Okay, and that's going to tell you, it's going to actually, we're going to shut down. <coughs> okay, skater isn't even going to get a chance to do anything to us at that point. Okay. This one you have a wedding cone, and when we go out there, you'll go, actually you guys saw it yesterday for the most part. It's a very large wedding cone. It's a larger version of the uh, potassium permanganate one that you have there. Okay. Now what you also have here is you have the feeder, and the feeders are basically the same as what you have over Chem 1. It's a DC drive, they have agitators inside there. Okay, unfortunately, unlike Chem 1, you can't look inside today because they all have product in there. Okay, and what you can do here is, of course, you can run things in hand, which right now we can't run anything except the post line, okay, because they're connecting everything, okay. And the other thing that's a big difference compared to the Chem 1 is you have a bin activator, okay. So what you have, if you look up here, we have a hopper high level, okay. Now this has nothing to do with your silo. When we go out there, you'll see that there's two probes on the feeder. A low level and a high level. When we get to the low level, what will happen is it will turn on the bin activator. And the idea is to put more product into the feeder. Okay? Now, if the product is free flowing, like if we were running the carbon since yesterday, since that was so aerated, it would just free flow. I've actually had customers where they've actually complained because they say, well, the bin activator never seems to run. And I said, well, do you run out of product? They go, no. Well, it's only supposed to run if you run to low level, like the line, you're definitely going to need it, okay? Okay, that's what that's for. Even uh, if you're standing out here, it's only going to run for a split second. I mean, it's not going to take much for it to get from the low level to the high level, okay? And then once it hits the high level, it'll shut off. There is a timer built into the PLC, I think it's like uh, a minute, 30 seconds, something like that that if it runs for that long, it will give a bin activator alarm saying that for some reason, it's not hit the high level. Now that could mean that maybe this the silo is empty. It might mean maybe the bin activator is tripped out, okay, um, or there's a problem with the probes. But for some reason, it's running longer than it's supposed to, okay. And then there's a wedding cone high level. So if that cone, for some reason, if the inductor's not taking away the water, that cone's going to back up. Well, if that cone backs up, what's going to end up happening is going to get to the high level. And it's going to shut you down. Okay. So if it hits that high level. Right. 
It's cutting the feeder off. Yes. Okay. If it cuts it off, will it restart when the low level bleed is below? That? No, because you're going to shut down a little lawn at that point. It'll shut down a little lawn. Right. Can you restart it in remote eventually? Sure. What you do is you would have to find out why you hit the high level. Clear out that. So you have to clear that to start. Well, the alarm would actually have alarm acknowledged here. So what would happen here is once you get to high level, you'd have to hit the alarm acknowledge. Okay? You, and you have to clear it. You gotta get the water out of there. You gotta find out why it backed up. So what if I switch files and we know it's not high, but would that disable the theater? You mean if you get the high if the high level is not say switch screws up or whatever high level screws. Right. You're going to shut down. Then you can't restart. Mm, there's a way of bypassing the maintenance guys would just have to jump right out. Okay. okay. It's, it's just a probe. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the worst case is you pull the wire off the probe. That's all you would have to do. Okay. It's a little intrinsically safe device that's down here, for instance. Okay. So if that was to fail or something like that, all you got to do is pull, you know, all it is is just running a low voltage to it. So Um, there is a system start and a system stop, but from what I understand, you guys are not going to be using that. Okay. Only in manual. If we have started in manual. Okay, so you do want it for manual, though. You want to be able to use it in manual. Yeah. Okay. See, that's see, that's a good thing we're talking about. The primary is remote. Remote. But you will be able to... Okay. So we will have to use it. Now, when you say local control, are you saying without the skater? Yes. Okay. When we put it in hand. Well, yeah, you can run everything still in hand, and these buttons would have nothing to do with it. Okay, just like you do with the Chem 1. Okay, you put everything in hand, you'll see that over there when we do that. Everything's going to come up and fire up. Okay. What this does is if you're in auto and you hit the start, that means if you have a low water pressure or something like that, it's going to shut you down. It's going to run as though it's in full automatic without the skater sending it to start command. But you can still run it in hand, totally in hand from here. Okay, that's tied into the problem. So Right, so that's what I want to make sure we're clear about at this point then, is... That has to go away. So, you don't want these then? No, we want to put it in hand here. So, so when you, that's what I'm saying, that's, that's why I want to make sure we're sure about the nomenclature here when you say hand and auto and everything. When you say hand, we're talking about putting the switches over here to hand all together, right? Okay, so, like I was saying, these switches are going to go away. Okay. That's why I just want to make sure. Okay. Now what we have is the post line and the pre-line. These two panels are absolutely identical. Okay. The two silos, for the most part, were identical. The only difference is were the size of the augers and the size of the inductor, which they then ended up putting in for the right ones. And again, what you have is the same thing. You have the same DC drive with the thumb drive, the thumb wheel that we've talked about. Okay, you're going to get a 4 to 20, um, an analog, a remote signal to tell us what speed to run at. Okay, um, you have your low water pressures for your main line and your inductor. Okay, you're going to have your water valve open, your inductor valve open. If the dissolving tank hits high level, this will shut you down too. That means the inductor is not taking it away for some reason. Okay, one of the tests that you guys want to try tomorrow. And trust me, I know when those valves are closed, it doesn't take long for that tank to fill. I flooded that thing out a few times yesterday. <coughs> okay, hop a low level, hop a high level is exactly the same as what it is on the carbon. If we get to the low level, the bindicator will run. Okay, then we have the two mixers. Unlike over there, when you had the mixers in the tank, you just turned it on, it is tied to. Um, an auto in hand. 
okay? The reason it's in auto is there's a probe in there that you have to get above a certain level and then that will turn on the allow the mixer to run, okay? The reason for that is to make sure that we have enough water in there. Okay. Um, and then you have your water inductors. You have the hopper vibrator. There's a little vibrator just on a hopper. Same as what you saw over Chem 1. Your bin activator, and then you have the feeder. So again, the big difference in this system is again the bin activator. Okay. Uh, the only other difference that you have over here is you do have your silo points here. Okay. So what we'll do right now, we're going to go out and get the truck pound and then walk around. Hopefully nobody... I have a question for you. Go ahead. On the old silos we have out there, mm -hmm. the, uh, when we put it in hand, the bin activator and the uh, hopper activator is in auto and we put it in hand, but they will still operate. Operate bin activator and pan. I mean, we leave, when we go put those in manual, we leave the bin activator, the hopper and the bin in auto and they operate. That's correct. So, do we have to do that here? Would they do the same here? You'd have to leave all the switches in auto. In other words, if you turn the bin activator in hand, mm -hmm. that bin activator will run the entire time it's in hand. Same as ours. Oh, okay. Ours works similar to theirs. It just it doesn't work off the hopper level. It works off of uh, it has the low level and it will come on, but it comes on. It's very similar. Same but we can operate in hand right. and leave the op in auto. Yeah. Yeah. The second you take any of these switches from auto to hand, I don't know what the skate is going to do at that point because it is looking for all the switches to be in hand. Now what I just did was turned on the waters. Okay. Hopefully it's not too bad by the time we get out there. It shouldn't be. I had not run it for a while this morning. Okay, so let's walk on out, get the truck. The things I think I did with you guys yesterday, I pulled a couple of you guys inside. These lights, you're basically, with direct sunlight, you really can't see it. Okay, so if you want to know where your probes are at, the easiest thing to go inside. <coughs> basically what you're going to do here, you're always going to leave the power on, and you're going to leave the dust collector in the auto position. Okay, what that does is when you pull this off, okay, okay, we won't do that, but when you do, this switch pops out and the dust collector will come on, okay. This is why the uh, they actually had the wiring and that's the way it was working yesterday, okay. They haven't gotten the switch for that one down there and we just had that one in hand. Okay, so what ends up happening is, just like you guys saw yesterday, the trucker comes in, pulls this off, puts his hose on, and he runs it, okay? When he's done, he pulls off his hose, he puts this on, hits that switch, and that dust collector will time out in five minutes. Okay, now if there's a problem with this switch, for whatever reason, you could always run it in hand. You just turn the switch to hand, the dust collector will turn on, okay? Now you guys saw the dust collector yesterday, okay? So you can feel the suction here, okay? It does have a nice little suction here, okay? Um, I, the truck drivers yesterday didn't ask this, but I did have one truck driver ask one time. He thought it was enough suction to pull it out of the truck. Obviously it's not, okay? Um, and then what they end up doing, uh, another question that was always brought up, um, not always, was brought up yesterday too, was plugging the lines. Okay, what they end up doing is when they're done filling up the, the the silo, they actually blast air through here. That could have been a problem though because they filled up half of one yesterday, didn't they? So this one probably didn't get the blast of air through here. So, I don't know, I wasn't watching him at what that point. So I don't know, he probably couldn't have done that because he still had lime in his truck. Um, You'll be back. Yeah. So. <laughs> Cheers. Tuesday already? Okay. <laughs> All right. Shall we walk around? And, uh, <coughs> they got the most room in. They stick this on the outside. The ones where they don't have enough room, they put it on the inside. I don't know why. But what you have here is your meter. 
Now, if you notice, the meter's not on right now. It will only be on when the dust collector is running. This is the meter that, if it starts saying 7 to 10, okay, that means the bags need to be replaced. 7.0. 7.0. Right now, yesterday, it was saying 0.2 to 0.5. And that's as we were filling up products. That means those bags are clean. Okay? So, you know, unless it gets up to 7, 8, 9, and stays there consistently. Now, what will happen is, once the bags have a little bit more use, you'll see that it'll go to 2 and pop up to 5 or 6 as that slide gate moves. Okay? That's okay. What you don't want to see is if you look at this and you're running the dust collector and it's staying at 7 and 8 and that slide gate moves and it goes up to 9 and 10. Okay? I mean, the dust collector will work, but at that point, that's when you got to tell somebody you got to get up there and change out those bags. How often? It depends on how much line you guys get on there. Then the other switches you have here is you have a slide gate. The slide gate should be in the auto position. That means the timer and the PLC is controlling the slide gate for that. Okay. I can't think of a reason why you guys put it in hand. That's more of a maintenance type of thing, I would think. This is the slide gate up there, yes. Okay. Not the slide gate that's above the feeder. It's a good point because I when I first saw that, that's what I thought it was for too. Okay. Then you have a fan and you have a heater. Okay, which on a day like today, you really don't need either one. Well, like last week or a few weeks ago, yeah, you need the heater. And in about another month or two months down here, you're probably going to need to turn on the fan. Okay, what the fan does is pull the hot air out of the silo, and of course the heater warms up. So. Okay, right now I have them both on. And they're all thermostats for setting them inside here. This is your wetting cone. Okay, so what you got is your two water lines coming in, just like you do on the chem water. Is you have your conductor one here, okay, you have your wetting cone, you put the nice spray in here, okay, for your car. Okay. Now the nice thing about this one is with a flashlight, you can actually shine it down, and as you see, make sure that the water, you get the carbon wet and everything like that. And then, of course, you have your flow meter down there, which right now I have it open to about halfway. We have a good vortex going in there at that point. And then, of course, you have your solenoid pressure switches. This one, compared to the other two silos, is a joy. Especially for somebody like me. Okay. Alright, let's go over to the post one now, which is running. Get out of here, turn it on. That's the check valve over here. That's the check valve, and that's actually what makes the noise. I'm going to call up and make sure if that's a problem anymore. I've never heard of him doing that before. This is our dust collection. Right, this is your dust and vapor here. So you've got your water coming out of there. And then this is your conductor. And then you're piping over there, things over the pressure. And then you have your inlet water coming here. Over there, over there. Okay, so what is this? What's the purpose of this too? This tube is keeping the dust and vapor. The water pressure coming up here, going down, right and over here, it's going to suck in the air out, so any line does to get pulled out this way. But not going in there, it's all in the back. Right. It ain't going in the water in there, it's all in the back. No. It's pulling the water, it's pulling the it's pulling the water, 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 that's the drain. That's the drain for that slurry. You going to waste that much water every day? Just let it go down the drain like that? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mixers off right now, right? Okay. If you want to, I'll go over there and turn them on. We can do that. Yeah, I'd like to do sure. that. Sure. But I'm going to do that. You want me to send the chart? You want to put the toilet mixer on? Mix on the other side? Yeah. All right. You can do it. Just turn them in hand. Mix yeah. sure on. Turn mix on all four of them. Turn on all four of them. That way there's no mistake. If you look at the top and the front here, it says which one's one and which one's two. I think this one's one. And turn off the water solenoids, please. Cut off the water solenoids. Just put them in the off position. Both of them? Yes. Please. This is this right here, guys, is our one piece of hose that we'll have to pull apart and clean. You see the two? Mm -hmm. This this is the piece. And what you're going to do is you'll go from, you can change, you can make feeder one go into this line or feeder two go into this line or vice versa. You see how we're up and down here? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be what this is, guys, unless you want to, do you want to? No, let's keep going. I don't know what that's for. Uh, this is your chlorine switch over. Okay? Mm -hmm. The chlorine is coming up into here. Yeah. So that we can swap it around and clean one line on one side. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And you're going to have four lines leaving here. And there's going to be two lines and two chlorine. You'll be able to interchange those. That's what I believe this is for. He's got the mixers on there. He's got the mixers on there. He's got the water off. I'm going to turn this back on. Your start and stops, this is what you're starting and stopping. Your cylinders. And then the other stuff. And then these are your pressure switches, which is, you may notice, are different than what you just looked at because they don't need to be explosion proof in here. So what would these do? What, what's their... These would be, if you lose water, you get low water pressure. Okay? If you get low water pressure, it's cutting this whole thing it's off. It's cutting the whole thing the off. Right. Because especially with the inductor, if you don't have enough pressure before the whole thing backs up and has all sorts of problems, it's going to shut it down. 
and that's our system is going to shut down. And the skater will see low water pressure. Okay, so you'll sit there and say, "Wow, the line post line system shut down, but it shut down with low water pressure. Well, why'd that happen?" Okay. Hopefully, somebody just had the wrong valve turned or something like that. Sean, pressure switches. Low pressure. See they're going off already. You didn't see them. They clicked on my automatic. They would have shut the system down. If you're running in auto. You're not. Right. If the switches are all in auto, and you started from the skater, or even if you did it today from hitting the start button, it would have shut us down. So the other thing that comes into play is also that when you get to a point and you're going to leave this tank half full like it is, you're probably going to want to turn these mixes to hand so that you keep getting a good mix just like you do on the other side, right? Especially with lime. It doesn't take much for lime to fall out of a solution to get to the bottom of the tank here. Okay. But if that does happen, there are plates here that are just bolted on that you can remove. Okay. And this is the low level and the high level that turns on the vindicators that we were talking about before. Okay. And these are the slide gates that aren't fully open. I noticed that, but we definitely got lime in there, no problem. Okay. Is that something we manually do? Or yes. So manually we would put them wherever we need. Actually, most people leave them open and that's it. The reason they're there is if maintenance has to, if you have to change out the auger, or for some reason something gets inside here that's not supposed to be in here, well, you got a silo full of product, what do you do at that point? At least here you close off the slide gate and you only have a feed of to deal with for a fly. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna go over this part a little bit more yeah, later. Um, but from what I see, you're going to have to swap valves beneath here to force the quarry to the one side of the other. In fact, we'll go over that a little bit more later. Because we've got a, some changes coming with muriatic acid and we're not really sure how it's going to affect that. But the chlorine is supposed to have been brought into the silo to eliminate the, the huge maintenance that y'all are all aware of. So this rubber piece of hose is supposed to be the only piece we ever change from now on is provided chlorine came into here. But hypochlorite does not clean lime. So now we're looking at the design of a muriatic acid system that will I have no idea. I don't know whether because the hypochlorite below still has to go through here. We still have to feed post chlorine hypochlorite. We will have to add at least a little more additional line from your end. And it will have to be able to come in to each side or each line side. There's so, two of them? That's one? Yeah, there's, there's a... Yeah. Is that because the uh, chlorine is at a point eight and they manufacture it from the sodium hypochlorite? Because sodium hypochlorite is yeah. different. If it is not an acid, it's a high pH chlorine. Mm -hmm. It has a, a very high pH and it, lime has a high pH, so it will not clean the lime. Nobody made us aware of that until they were probably sitting here. So now we're trying to adjust. So there's going to be some changes, so I'm telling y'all a lot about it. I'm not going to change it. Okay. That's why you need two. It's two per tank. Super tight. We need that mix. Yes. Because of the size of the tank. Have a dead space for that. How do we get them out? What do you mean, how do you get them out? Not easily. Not easily. Well, these come off, it's just the four bolts, and then it will slide up. But with everything here, it won't be easy. So, the reason I say it is we get to a point down the line, maybe seven, eight years from now, ten years from now, I can hear 
a mechanic saying you don't need it. Do I need it? Yes, especially that one. It's that one's in front of the Correct. That's the one you're gonna need more than that one because that's there and um, the effector's over there, but you're gonna want that one to be yeah, I, I, I was looking at that when I was here the last time, and that is, the reason I was looking at it, because I was the one trying to squeeze down the center here to tighten everything up, and I wasn't able to get to some of the ones in the center, but they didn't cause any problems, I was really. Yeah, I just, I see some issues, I just wonder, this, this was probably put in first, uh, I forgot to pull this rack off. Well, to get that, the feet, this this pulls off, and then there's four bolts that hold the motor in. So actually, if they had to take that out, they can't get that, pull that out, and pull the motor. Shaft. Right. Shaft that yeah. So ideally, what would happen there with the um, mixer? Yeah, bearing could go bad, which means then you got to pull out the whole thing. But if the motor goes bad, it's just four bolts. It's a love joy coupling. You. Undo that and then you pull out the motor, put a new motor in. <laughs> Easier said than done from this position, but you know. They show if the mechanics come tomorrow, they're going to ask you that. But yes, you do need, and especially that one, you're going to need that. Okay. Explosion uh, proof, right? No, these don't have to be. The other ones are. Yeah, the slot. They're the same ones, like if they left the, they're the same ones in there, but. Activator. That's your bin activator, right? So you got two of those. Do you have a hollow like vibrator? Yes. It's right. on the back side. Okay. 
And uh, I, I'm just curious as to whether that might be an issue now. I'm sure. Uh, sure. I'll, I'll double check that. That's no problem. Just looking for ways while I'm asking you to say, hey, what, are you, what is your opinion of that? I know what we like to do is what, what that is, but I've seen customers where they've piped it back into the lines or something like that. I'll just double check. You know, I don't want to say one thing and then I'll go back and find out I was wrong, which usually does happen. <laughs> well, years from now, you know, there's somebody else that we're talking to, and I don't know exactly what we're doing. But I know that we know our system. It's a job. Right. You've been out here, you remember, you, you know what 